Bringing in 2021 means bringing in Wrestle Kingdom. It's the start of the year, so that means it's Wrestle Kingdom time. And of course, for now the fourth time on this channel, I'm going to preview the Wrestle Kingdom card as obviously it has changed now. Now it's two cards split into uh, two nights, six matches per, you know, main show matches. And then we have on night one, we have the, the uh, New Japan Rambo. And then we have on night two, two Stardom Dark matches. As uh, we will start off with the New Japan Rambo, which is the uh, New Japan Rumble. And it's a bit of a tradition that has <laughs> come and gone, and now it's back. As far as uh, this year, though, it's going to be very, very different. As I like the, the idea, they're not, instead of just calling it the New Japan Rumble, which it usually used to be called that, but uh, New Japan Rambo, that just means a run riot. You know, it's, it's just the Japanese word for run riot, so. Uh, it's pretty fun that that, you know, that's a pretty fun name for a rumble if you had to guess, or if you, if I had to say so, as, uh, the New Japan Rambo, the 2021, they're gonna call it the King of Pro Wrestling 2021's New Japan, uh, Rambo, so basically it's gonna have 22 people, it's gonna be timed intervals, so it's much like a timed rumble, as if you've never, you know, seen it before, it's elimination from, uh, pinball submission and being, uh, thrown over the top rope. As far as this year, the make why it's so different, as it's going to come down to the final four, and that final four will face off and will be the first person to hold the King of Pro Wrestling 2021 trophy. So basically, uh, you know, Yano basically vacated the King of Pro Wrestling trophy. Now that it's you know the new year, as uh, kind of interesting. It, it's an interesting format. I think depending on who's the final four, maybe it's going to be a, an interesting. Uh, yeah, these New Japan Rumbles are always fun, though. It, you know, you bring back legends, you have a lot of fun shit that goes along with it. And, you know, as far as this year, I think this is going to be pretty much the biggest New Japan, uh, as far as name value and star-wise, because there's a lot of guys that I see that are missing on this card. It's like, well, they're going to fit in right in with this New Japan Rambo. I mean, we got Minoru Suzuki, who's probably going to be in it. I think Hiroki Goto's going to be in it, which that's nuts. Uh, Tomura Ishii's going to probably be in it. A lot of big names as far as uh, who's going to win this damn thing. You know, I wouldn't say, you know, someone like Minoru Suzuki and Tomori Ishii and uh, Hiroki Goto, they'll probably be a part of the four for sure. No doubt about it. As far as, you know, Toriyano, I think he's going to make it no matter what just because it's, you know, it, it is his kind of domain, the King of Pro Wrestling gimmick. Uh, maybe they'll have a big guy. Maybe they'll have Fale. I really hope not. Maybe it's even a legend they'll have be a part of this final four a lot of different ways they can go about it it's usually a fun time I remember when scott norton was in it that was a huge pop as far as who's won it though uh yuji nagata won in 2015 jada won in 2016 piece of shit michael Logan won in 2017 and then 2018 which is last time they done it was masito kakahara who did it for yoshiro takayama that was uh the year that yoshiro takayama sadly or actually the year before that 2017 because this was the start of 2018 was uh you know, that was when he sadly became paralyzed thanks to the sunset flip and uh just that was a real good like feel good moment it's kind of it sucked that it didn't come back last year they did the the new japan uh never open weight six man fucking gauntlet which they i'd rather have the New Japan Rando than that, just because, I mean, you can even tell that's not on the, any of the two cards. When you can't even make the fucking Wrestle Kingdom both cards, can't even make one fucking match for it on a basically 12, 13, 14 match card. Yeah, that's, uh, that's bad. That's when you know even New Japan's over him. It's, uh, it's, uh, I can't remember the last time they, like, Yoshiashi gets one of the belts and then it just goes in the toilet. That just thanks a lot, Yoshiashi. You fucking, bl I mean, he cursed it. He cursed it as uh, it was already in the t in the toilet. But Jesus Christ, like I need any more help getting shoved down into the toilet. But yeah, I think there's a lot of guys that could make it interesting four way. I would love to see you know Demarishi being in it. I you know as far as the New Japan dads just gotta be gotta be involved. And Yano's probably gonna be the the fourth guy. Maybe, you know, we'll see, though. We shall definitely see. It's always a, a highlight for, for uh, me, personally, just to see a lot of the, the legends of one. That's just a fun time. It's a fun little way to open up the uh, the festivities, if you will. And the actual opener, I'm, you know, shocked that this is the opener, but it kind of makes sense, as uh, Tsuromu Takahashi versus El Phantasmo. 
So it's best Super Junior 27 winner and Super J Cup 2020 winner taken off. Kind of fun. That was a fun way of going about it. Uh, too bad it's El Phantasmo and, and, Hiromu, and Hiromu Takahashi, not someone, you know, like uh, even ACH and Leo Rush. Uh, you know, Chris Bay, someone like that, and not, uh, and instead we get El Phantasma, who is, I guess, is gonna debut new music, so that's, gonna you know, look out for that. Uh, just, as far as a whole, obviously, Hiroma's gonna get the win, just cause, I mean, it feels like they gotta go with him and Taiji Shimori, I mean, him and Taiji Shimori feel like, as far as, you know, it's two and one right now, as far as the record goes, so they need, need their fourth, though Hiroma and El Phantasma Rather it be an interesting bout as Bullet Club versus Bullet Club. I just do not see that happening at all. I just don't see it in the cards. As far as, you know, Hiromu, what a, uh, just a Wrestle Kingdom kind of run he's had. His first one against Kushida, which that was a phenomenal match they had. Then he has him and Osprey. Uh, you have the, uh, the tag team, you know, Liger's last ever match. Crazy. Crazy, and now you, you come to this, which, this match not so much, but the Taiji Shimori match, that should be really good. But there, I, maybe, you know, we're kind of soured on that matchup, too, at the same time, and we just did see it, like, in three times, in the, basically three times in a row in, in one year. Just, uh, it's, it's tough, it's tough. Uh, but I, I think it, it could still be a great match, for, for sure. I'm assuming Aroma's gonna walk out of Wrestle Kingdom as the junior champion, but uh, fingers crossed, at least. Yeah, I guess it's never a given with Ghetto at the book. And, you know, it should be a, a fun oh, way to open up the show with Hiroma getting a win. As far as the next matchup, IWGP Tag Team Championship matchup is Dangerous Techers and Zack Sabre Jr. and Tai Chi taking on Girls of Destiny. Now, this is kind of an odd match because, really, as far as this goes, they haven't, uh, as far as Dangerous Techers, they are the IWGP champions, but G.O.D. is 3-0 and against them. So, obviously, it's kind of lined up to where, finally... They're going to win, and finally they can, you know, stop it and, and keep it going. But uh, we shall see. We shall definitely see. Uh, as far as excitement goes, on uh, a scale like 1 to 10, I'm probably about a 2. And that's just because the 2 is for, well, uh, maybe a little bit more than a 2. It, it, I'll, get, I'll say a 4 out of 10, and that 4 is all 4 being for Tai Chi being at Wrestle Kingdom. That's so fucking awesome. I'm happy that he's going into Wrestle Kingdom as a champion, and it's just cool. And he gets somewhat of a high-profile match. It's still the second match on the card, so not really high-profile, but still a match. It's still a title match. Granted, it's for the... I mean, it's sad that, I, you know, talking about the IWGP Tag Team Championship, and it's not really... I'm not, you know, just not exciting. I'm just not really like, wow, this is going to be a, a you know great match I'm looking forward to. It's just not. And that is... Uh, Mainly due to G.O.D. probably. I mean, G.O.D. probably in the, uh, you know, what? I want, what's it been? Five years they've been in New Japan now? Four or five, probably. I, don't, I mean, they've had, like, maybe one good match. Maybe two. Where I'm like, that was really impressive. It's just, it's just not in the cards for them. But uh, who knows? I, I feel like Dangerous Techers, at least, you know, they get to walk out as champions. Fingers crossed again with Ghetto as the bookman. Now for this matchup here, the third matchup on the card for the briefcase, thanks to uh, John Moxley not being able to make it to the, the event. Uh, so we have instead, just kind of, instead of like an interim championship, we just have for the briefcase holder, as this was supposed to be Juice Robinson and Kenta, but Juice Robinson fractured his left orbital bone and now he will not be able to compete. But before Christmas Eve, December 23rd, fucking Satoshi Kojima, it's the Koji Cutter again, to, and he threw his hat into the U.S. briefcase ring, if you will, and now we're seeing the 50-year-old man, Satoshi Kojima, competing. Now, I, for one, am excited as hell to see this. Honestly, as far as this undercard matchups go, the match I am most looking forward to on Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, as far as the undercard goes, maybe not as a whole, because I still think, you know, like, Naito and Ibushi, I'm probably, even though it's been done, I wouldn't say the death, but it's done a good bit in the past couple of years compared to, obviously, this matchup being a first-time matchup, which I love. There's a lot of people out there that was like, ah, this should have been, like, Tomori Ishii, this should have been somebody else, or Roki Goto, even. Somebody that should, listen, God bless those guys. We know how they're treated. Satoshi Kojima, at least, has some history in Wrestle Kingdom. 
main event of Wrestle Kingdom against Hiroshi Tanahashi back in 2011, which that started the great Tanahashi IWGP Heavyweight title run. He's a man that has never got that send-off, and that used to be, you know, a, a thing of the past now, it seems like. You know, Yuji Nagata, he had his great send-off in the G1. That was kind of like the last one. You know, uh, Tenzan doesn't really have one. Kojima, I was waiting for Kojima to have that G1, final G1 run, and it just did not fucking happen. This this can be my my piece. Because we knew, even if it was going to be Tomori Ishii or Roki Goto, they were just going to lose. So in my opinion, my opinion, instead of having those guys lose to Kenta, why don't we have Kojima, who's a name guy, who's a guy who is has history in Wrestle Kingdom, who's the fucking man? Zadoshi Kojima, God bless him, he's fucking awesome. Fucking leader of Bread Club, he's the man. Who, who doesn't love Satoshi Kojima? I mean, he's w w probably one of the favorite New Japan dads, probably behind Yuji Nagata as far as number one New Japan dad. And he's awesome. He's, God bless him. It would be, it's going to be fun. I, will, I don't know how far is the uh, capacity crowd's going to be, obviously, with COVID. I don't know if they're going to do, like, obviously, probably six feet apart seating. So, a little less than half attendance for this. I think that place is going to be rocking for Kojima, though. I, that, they're going to love every second of that. Plus, it's going to be awesome for Kenta. Like, Kenta still being a part of New Japan. Him and uh, just the New Japan environment so far has been fun, and he's been doing a lot of great shit. Just seems like everything's going his way. We'll see how it goes, though, as far as as a whole. As now for the fourth match on the card, another first-time meeting as it's Hiroshi Tanahashi taking on the great Okan Tanahashi. Man, oh man, Mr. Tokyo Dome himself as the man who has, I mean, 10, 10 January 4th main events is this man. And that time, it, it has come and gone, those main events. Uh, you know, as far as him and Kazuchika Okada, I mean, they have, for the first time since Wrestle Kingdom 4, and that was 2010, so 10 years it's been since... There has been a main event between Okada and Tanahashi. But now, for the first time, that's not the case. Not the case at all. Nuts. Nuts, nuts, nuts. I mean, I just can't believe it. I, I, it's kind of a crazy t statistic, but uh, it's just here we are. Uh, with Tanahashi here, this is definitely as far as the farthest he's been be below the card on a Wrestle Kingdom Ever. I mean, the fourth match on the card. No belt. Same thing. This has the same feeling as the Jay White matchup. That match, though, I was a lot more excited going into it because I just knew how great Jay White would become. And, you know, there's a whole thing. This was his first match back from the surgery. The Great Okan, on the other hand, not so fucking much. Great Okan is definitely a step down for what Jay White was, excursion-wise and whatnot. And, I mean, this is just... Is it? I I wouldn't say it's sad that Tanahashi's in this spot, because this I mean he is up there in age, been doing it for twenty twenty five years now. It's your time, you know. Wrestling should be at least should be a fucking revolving door, right? You know the idea, kind of the the thought process behind getting in the business. You start in the opener and then you end in the opener. You work your way up the card and then you work your way back down the card. And this is Tanahashi working his way. Back down the card now. Uh, and with this match here, this is a great spot for Great Okan, obviously. I mean, you're in a big, big time matchup with, uh, you know, Wrestle Kingdom matchup with Roche Tanahashi. That should be a big enough fucking statement as it is. I think with a half capacity crowd, I feel like the crowd so far hasn't really been glamoring and, and high on Great Okan so far, at least shows wise that he's been in which have been very limited though you know it's still very early on but it just seems like with the empire they're trying to you know more heel factions like new japan needs anymore we have this match here tanahashi and it, it just it seems like it's deja vu with that jay white matchup because that matchup went in i was very very excited and it just fucking shat all over it. I mean, I wouldn't say it was like a, a terrible matchup. It just was not at the standard of what Tanahashi Wrestle Kingdom the matches have been. Now, obviously, those matches are, you know, I mean, we're talking main event, co-main event, some of the best matches I've ever seen have happened 
at Hiroshi Tanahashi in Wrestle Kingdom. So that's another, you know, that's just as far as maybe an unfair going into it, just uh, hyping that up way too much before it can happen. But I just knew how great Jay White would be. Great O'Connor, on the other hand, there's stuff he does that I love. That gimmick sucks, I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. It's fucking honest from WCW. I just can't stand it. But maybe the crowd will get into it. Maybe it'll become an actual great gimmick. Who knows? It just feels like it's going down that route of just too gimmicky. Very like uh, Azuka in a way. Yeah, like with that metal iron claw where it's just like this is an undercard act that will never get farther than this. But who knows? Maybe he can, you know, change something up and fix it. But as far as this match goes, I'm going in with very low expectations. If it shocks me, it shocks me. God bless him, but I just do not see it happening. Good on Hiroshi Tanashi, though. He's getting this matchup. It's kind of funny the graphics says special singles matchup. There, there's nothing special about this matchup. It's special that Hiroshi Tanahashi's in the match, but that's about it. Uh, this is just... It, it is what it is. You know, it's... It's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. Undercard of Wrestle Kingdom. Gotta love it. As the next matchup. The fifth match on the card. Which is, you know, co-main event. Kind of wild that, uh, you know, there's not a title match going into the, ma uh, the main. But that's just kind of where we're at now with the two breaking up the card of Wrestle Kingdom. Just where we're at. As uh, Kazuchika Okada versus Will Ospreay. You know, Okada and Ospreay. Listen, this is... If Will Ospreay's not a piece of shit... Am I way excited for this matchup a year ago? Yeah. Yeah, way ex now it's just... I just hope Okada wins, fingers crossed. That's what I'm hoping for. But the thing is, Okada is 4-1. I think they're going to send a message. And the message is, you know, putting over new stars. They won't have great Okami time. If they do, Jesus Christ, what a fucking win. And I think they'll keep it going to have Osprey win. I feel like they're going to really push Empire big. You know, they're the fresh new thing. They're the new toy. They put them, you know, they're going to put them over as much as they can. And uh, what a way to put them over. Fucking Kazuchika Okada and Roshi Tanahashi. If that's... I highly, highly doubt they'll have Great Okada beat Tanahashi. But they'll at least have Osprey beat Okada here. Uh, you know, Okada's got the winning record. He can bounce back from it. You know, he lost to Jay White. You know, he's... Had, he's lost at Wrestle Kingdom before. I think, uh, you know, as far as this goes, Okada, first full year in New Japan where he has not challenged for the belt, or challenged for the belt, as in the IWGP Heavyweight title. Nuts. Uh, this has been an, an odd year, to say the least, but having Okada not being the title scene, I think it uh, maybe, you know, benefited from having new stars, but really the new star was... A, a freshly heel turned on L.I.J., Evil, and some shit matches. At least with Osprey, granted he's a piece of shit of a person, but at least in the ring, you have to give him credit, he is a somewhat talented bastard. For this match, though, uh, it's going to be... I don't think the crowd really cares what Osprey does outside the ring, so I feel like they're probably going to give this a lot of passion, a lot of energy. So I think it's going to come across well, but for those who know in the back of their head that this guy's a piece of shit and they won't really give in to the credit of what Will's doing, maybe it won't come across well as far as everybody watching at home. But we'll see, though. That's going to be uh, it's gonna be an interesting one. As the main event, double title matchup, as always, I feel like with these you know heavyweight intercontinentals, I just that double title matchup. The man who won the G1 Climax, but then lost the briefcase and really shouldn't be getting a title shot, but here we are. It's Koto Bushi and Tetsuya Naito. Main event. Obviously, these two, I mean, the, the first time they faced off, which was back in 2013, much, much different people. That mere seven, well, yeah, now we're going into eight years now, Jesus Christ, this is 2021. Wild. A wild time that they have had as far as evolving and coming around. And Kodobushi's kind of had the same style and whatnot, but really Tetsu Naito is night and day different. They are 5-3 and three as a whole. Or 1-1 one and one in Intercontinental title matches. So this is basically the rubber match as far as that goes. I think it was a great job to hold off 2020 with them not doing anything. Because they really did a whole lot in 2019. And now they get that year break. Now they come back with this in 2021. As far as this goes... Uh, this has been 
quite the matchup. I mean, they've wrestled all over the place. They've wrestled in Madison Square Garden. Naito lost to Ibushi as far as Ibushi going into the G1 Climax Finals in 2018. Uh, they have had quite the route. And now they're here at the Tokyo Dome. I feel like this is a great main event. As far as who's going to win this damn thing. Kota Ibushi. He has won every championship and achievement you can in New Japan. He is a junior heavyweight champion, a junior tag team champion, a never open weight champion, a IWGP heavyweight tag team champion, an intercontinental champion, has won the New Japan Cup, and he's won the G1 Climax not once but twice. The one thing he has not done, become the IWGP heavyweight champion. What a night this would be if he could beat Tetsuya Naito here and achieve that and be really... I mean, talk about, uh, I should, not even calling it, like, the, you know, the, uh, triple crown. This is the fucking golden star, <laughs> and he really is the golden star. Like, there's not a whole lot of people on this planet that can say they can do that. And, uh, he is, for sure, I mean, I, off the top of my head, he's gotta be the only one. I don't really have the notes in front of me to think of, you know, I didn't do that much research going into it, but he's gotta be. That is just... The, uh, maybe Goto might be the only one. Actually, yeah, it might be him and Goto, but I don't think Goto was a junior heavyweight champion or a junior tag team champion. So he was everything but the junior stuff. But yeah, Obushi for sure is the only guy who's done it all. And for him to be an heavyweight champion, I think he deserves it. I think he's a man who wrestled Kingdom. He's been a part of a lot of great moments. From beating Prince Devitt when Prince Devitt debuted the paint, the phenomenal match with Nakamura, Wrestle Kingdom 9. He's had phenomenal matches. He's had phenomenal moments. Uh, the never open weight match with him and, and Will Ospreay, when that match was like really hyped up and talked about. He's been just an all around phenomenal talent for years now. Just without question. I, I'd say from the beginning of the decade to the end of the decade, from 2010 to 2020 talk about in that just that time period one of the best Japanese pros had to offer from the junior heavyweight division from the heavyweight division transformation from DDT to New Japan full time he's been just sensational sensational and it, we're talking about deserving of a, a IWGP heavyweight title run it's this man he's been so close so many times from him and AJ Styles when Kenny Omega fucked them over in his you know we won the New Japan Cup he faced AJ and then Omega interfered to cost him the match. He's, you know, won the G1 Climax, uh, the G1 Climax twice. And he's lost, the, and he lost to Kazuchika Okada last year. This is, this is it. This is the moment. I, I feel like the man, desperately, desperately, he was a part of that fucking triple threat match for the belt uh, with <laughs> Omega, Cody, and him. If there's a man that deserves an IWGP heavyweight title run, I think, in my opinion, as far as the New Japan roster... Top to bottom. I would put his name number one. He deserves it. I think the crowd would absolutely go nuts for this. And they love to see Naito. And I think the crowd would go nuts for it. He's phenomenal. Phenomenal talent. And it sets up for him and Jay White. You know, obviously him and Jay White, they've had their history. Jay White beat him for the briefcase. Uh, which I was happy that finally happened. It just sucks that once it happened, it really had no effect on that at all as he gets his title match or not really the, he gets his title match and his main event like even if he didn't get the main event at least it's like well at least he got you know he it, it cost him his main event but still he gets his main event he gets his title match made no goddamn sense we just now have to wait for the you know the night two to see what happens i'm gonna go with Kota Ibushi getting the win if Naito wins, I'm not terribly upset. I feel like maybe... Uh, it, here's the thing. With Naito, it's just Ghetto's booking. Naito, the talent, is fantastic. Naito getting booked as champion has not been fantastic at all. I mean, no reigns at all have been just perfect A+, plus 10 out of 10. They've all kind of created something. Uh, the first time around, it created the Okada reign... That was just record breaking and sensation. The rain now, his previous rain, uh, before he dropped it to, to evil, was just 
you know, he, he wins at Wrestle Kingdom, which is a great moment. He beats Okada in the main event. Kenta attacks him, beats Kenta, COVID happens, drops the belt. Just terrible. Terrible, terrible timing for that man. Not really terrible timing, just terrible booking as far as when he's in charge. But, uh, man. Just man. These two get in the ring, they do push, they do push the physical limitations of what these two men can do. I mean, it is just a dangerous, dangerous bout when these two get in the ring. It is just a lot of one upsmanships, a lot of Kotobushi getting dumped on his poor head. But it's just insane. I, I know a lot of people, there's a lot of rumblings that Tetsuya Naito has been slowing down. And uh, he's getting to the point where just his legs have seemed to, be, seemed to be shot. And I just think, I know there's going to be a, a fucking Stardust Press in, in our future. He did one last year at, against Okada. I would love to see it. I think he's going to eat shit on it, and then it's going to st- set up for maybe uh, Bushi's Phoenix Splash, which I think it'd be even fun if he ate shit on it. And then it just it's a whole other thing, and it goes into the Destino counter fucking Bailey kick whole thing. Where these two, it's going to be great. And I think they deserve a, a, a Tokyo Dome main event. Because they've had some great matches throughout the years. I'm like, I'm excited for the main event. As far as this card as a whole. As far as like, if you're taking a screenshot of this just, boom. This is a, a you know, a Tokyo Dome show. My excitement level is about a 3 out of 10. <laughs> Not excited whatsoever compared to years past. Years past, I've been just on the edge of my seat, counting down the days. Just like, man, this is going to be so fucking awesome. Now, it's just like, there's gonna, we got to deal with a lot of bullshit to get to the great stuff now. And I just have have that feeling. But there's at least an undercard matchup I'm looking forward to seeing. Which, for New Japan, as of late, has been a rarity among rarities. But here, we, I mean, the Kento Kojima match, as far as just a dream match in general, for me. Like, this would, if you would have told... 13, 14 year old me in 2007, 2008, that Kenta and Kojima were going to face off, I would have lost my shit. Satoshi Kojima is one of the all time great heavyweights of our sport. Kenta is not only one of the great juniors, but I think one of the great Japanese pro wrestling uh, workers of all time. Just as far as his outreach in the States, his style, his junior style, him and name Ichimaru Fuji revolutionized what the juniors were doing in the mid 2000s, especially in crossing nowhere. They were the top junior division in the world. Fantastic stuff, and he's a great fucking performer. Even now, I think a lot of people were just kind of like, he, he's a shell of himself, He just he's injury prone, it's not going to happen. He's had a great, great year in 2020, I think, even with COVID. And in 2019, where I felt like there was a, he filled in a lot of questions for a lot of people. You know, can he survive a G1? Can he do this? Can he do that? And he's done a great job. He hasn't been really injured at all. And I think that style... That he's used to the press style and schedule, I think it's coming together well. Where he doesn't have to kill himself every week and uh, you know three, four times out of the fucking week on you know house shows, he can you know take it easy on those house shows and then he can bring that his his main shit on the main card. So thank you all for watching my preview. As for night two, we're gonna wait until night two's actually happened, just because you know I, I don't want to waste my breath talking about what ifs when we can just wait. And just do it then, uh, before Wrestle Kingdom uh, 15 Night 2 happens. Which, I mean, there's some good stuff on there as well, you know, in, in the making. I mean, Shingo and Jeff Cobb is going to be a lot of fun. I'm loving Taguchi and Wado as a team. I think that's a fun junior team. And despy has got a lot of momentum going on. Not excited for Sonata and Evil. I, I'll be honest with you, going into it. I just hope Sonata wins, but I got a feeling... He had a feeling he was going to look strong on that one. And then possibly Hiromu Ishimori, which that's going to be the co-main too. Which I think I'm, I'm very, very pleased that the junior heavyweight title scene is getting that ju- they're getting that co-main event on a Tokyo Dome show. Because for years that was the opener, that was the lower mid card. And they are making a lot of history. I mean, that is, that's a big time moment for them. And I hope they fucking knock it out of the park. And I think if it's going to be Taiji Ishimori in a room with Takahashi, they will do just that. As we will catch you guys then.